Let's build a cabinet partition. So as part of my cabinet building project, I have a 24 inch wide by 96 inch high divider that goes between the refrigerator and next set of cabinets. You don't actually want the raw edge of the wood showing. So like right here, I've got raw edge of wood, but I don't really care about that. That's not going to be shown on the exterior of the surface. What will be shown is this part. Length of the panel here is just raw plywood exposed edge. While you could leave it like this, it wouldn't look very good to paint it and just leave it exposed like that. What I'm going to do is I've got a piece of three quarter inch. It's pretty close to three quarter, but the plywood is just under three quarter because that's just the way three quarter plywood is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to base this edge or with this banding and then we'll have a nice finished edge for painting and it'll be a lot more durable than just raw exposed edge. The thing is with this plywood sheet that I have, have. This is not your typical plywood that you would get at a home center or whatever. This was actually from a hardwood dealer. It's where I get most of my hardwoods. It's much less expensive than a home center or someplace like that. This is cabinet grade plywood. It is not 96 inches long like you would find at a home center, but it is in fact 96 and a half inches. So I actually need to trim off a half inch off this. My table saw, it would be very difficult to do that, but I've got a simple solution to actually do that. So I'll show how that's done. So I've got my tape measure set up and I'm gonna mark 96 inches because that's how, how tall I need to make this. I make two lines, one on each side here. So they work the tape to the other side measure out 96 right here and then what I have is poor man's track saw just some MDF that was cut off of brick that I've learned on how to handle large bulky pieces of material then what you do is you simply line this piece up right here which represents where the saw blade is going to go on my circular saw line it up with these two edges right here and clamp it down from this standpoint you just Make sure that your support board, so you're not going to cut into your workbench. Right out of the way. Make sure this line right here, this board, is right on your where you need to cut. Then tighten these guys down. This here is nothing more than a metal stud with a piece of MDF screwed underneath of it. I then ran a circular saw along here, which then trimmed this piece off, which acts as the saw's extra ride. Uh, because I'm working over the edge here, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to position this like this. So it's rides like this, and then I can just run my circular saw right along here, and the shoe rides up against this straight edge and cuts it off. So for reference, it would run just like this and then cut it off. You wanna start the saw before you hit the material, otherwise you'll damage your material and possibly kick back your saw. Let's cut this edge right off. The one unfortunate thing that I forgot to do and did not check is I forgot to actually check the depth of my saw so I did not cut all the way through. Readjust the depth. My saw was actually set for cutting half inch material instead of three quarter. Every saw adjusts different. Push the shoe up a little so it goes a little bit deeper but not so deep that it will cut through my bench. Never doing anything with any of your tools, make any adjustments. Always make sure they're unplugged for safety. And now we'll, we'll recut this again, this time at a good depth. So as you can see right here, it's a nice cut right along that edge. That took off a half inch that I needed. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna hang this edge over the side of my workbench. That way when I put the banding board on here, I can actually feel the top and bottom, make sure it's overhanging just a little bit. And then what I do is I will flush trim it off with this edge. There's not much material on the side of this plywood. If you don't get it 
just right you could sand through it and then your finish won't look the same in the case of me i'm just painting it white so it really won't matter too much but you know flush trimming it you know having a little bit of hangover on each side and then flush trimming it up with the plywood will make your end product look so much better help me set up a little bit and so i don't have to really hold the edge banding here what i've done is i put little stickers sticking out from the edge here they'll flex up and down so i can actually work it up and down now i can just set my edge banding here what i'm going to do is i'm going to run a bead of glue along this edge make sure it's all nice and smoothed out and then what I'll end up doing is I will plaster the side of the edge board along there and then I'll take some pin nails and pin nail it in as well as some clamps to help clamp it on. I'm to work looking here to see which side's the best side so I can have the best side out. I'll set that right there. It should be here. It's just a little above, a little below. Like I said, I'll come back and flush trim that when I'm done. I'm going to run a bead of glue along here on the surface. Now what I'll do is I'll just flip this over. I start at the far end and work my way this way. I'll have a little bit here to trim off, then we'll beat that out of the deal. And I'm just gonna make sure there's a little bit of a little bit of floor above and below my plywood surface. Take these clamps off, which will allow that to fall. I'll clean those bad pins up when I'm done. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the actual the other side of this piece that I actually cut off. And in reality, I probably shouldn't have removed these yet because I still need a, something to kind of act as a little bit of a placeholder. What I'm going to do is I'm basically I'm going to use this edge here and clamp it on as a straight edge. All I basically want to do is apply some pressure evenly along here so that my so I'm getting a good good pressure along the entire board. And using this will, as a clamping edge, will help that achieve that goal. This is what it looks like when you get it all clamped up. This edge, I got a straight edge along here. I got a few places where the pins actually followed the grain within the, the edge here and they blew out. So that's why you never want to stick your hand in here where you're nailing. Uh, well, once this is all dried and glued up and, and everything, I will remove those pins so that they're no longer a safety hazard. I'll fill in the holes and stuff like that. This is all just going to be painted anyway, so it won't need to be super perfect as far as you know, noticing that there's potential holes or whatever in there or stain, different stain marks from like filler. And that's how you would glue on a, an edge board here. Uh, once this is all dried up and set, I got these removed. I'll come back here with my flush trim router, the flush trim bit, and I'll knock this edge down here and the edge underneath here. So that's even with the plywood and then it'll be good to go uh, into the rest of the cabinets. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting this edge so the bearing rides just below my board so the cutter will actually take off very little if any of the plywood if you see here I've got the carbide two bit here just below the surface of the glued board so that when I come through here it's just going to barely if anything hit the plywood 
Run along here and take this edge down. Uh, as always, you want to wear eye protection and hearing protection when using routers. These things are really loud. They can make some serious noise. You want to move at a steady pace so that you're not burning the cut. And because this is so big, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to probably place along here and keep moving. The link for this router is in the description if you want to check it out. Actually does a pretty good job here, making this nice and smooth and flush. I didn't tear into any of my plywood, which is good. Um, there are a few spots where my glue is sticking up where it did not take that off, which is fine. Um, and that's because I did not have it set very deep because I didn't want to potentially bury into the plywood. Overall, it did really well. I'll get this side cleaned up and then I'll take it and do the other side. I'll clean up this side right quick. actually did a really nice job here I did burn it in a couple of spots because I slowed down a little bit of sanding and this will be good as new um, but yeah I did a really nice job thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos